Hello everybody, this is the famous Richard Simcott, the organizer of the Polyglot Conference, somebody who has studied over 50 languages and has appeared in a lot of global media. Now our next guest has a knack for learning languages, studying over 50 and speaking over a dozen fluently. Now his latest challenge is mastering a cupola focal and Richard Simcott joins us now to tell us how is it all going. Well, good, good morning. morning. Diagwitch to you, Richard. How are you? When I studied in Spain, I lived in Macedonia for seven years. I was born in Spain and I was I have a chance to share with the people who are in the world. I have a chance to share with the people who are in the world. I have a chance to share with the people who are in the world. I have a chance to share with the people who are in the world. I have a chance to share with Richard, we go way back. I saw your video on YouTube where you're speaking a number of languages and say, hey, I know most of those languages. I want to have a chat with this guy. And I contacted you and I don't know, where we're using at that time, was it Yahoo or Skype or whatever? Oh, yeah. yeah, something. We got online together and started speaking a lot of different languages. We had this idea to apply for a symposium at an L3 conference. So the L3 meaning that it's not just the second language, but multiple language learning. Valencia, was it? Yes, exactly. It was you, Robert Bigler, also the famous uh, Luca Lampriello. I had this idea that we could do a great symposium. People who actually know a, yeah. a lot of languages, have a lot of experience. People in academia studying foreign language acquisition they're often monolinguals. <laughs> if they're English speakers, if they're not English speakers, they usually have to write papers so they know their language was English at least. So I thought it would be a great opportunity. You did too. It was a chance to connect. Yeah. It didn't work out. They gave all this symposium to local professors. Can you take it from there? Then you had this idea, you were talking with Luca, right? Yes. Yeah, so we, when we found out, Luca and I were walking around together. We were talking about what a shame it was that at an academic conference, we couldn't get to interact because the idea of sharing ideas between academics, language enthusiasts and language professionals was a key element that was missing. That these worlds were all closed off from each other really, uh, particularly academia. It felt like there were so many bright ideas and great thoughts. You could learn a lot and mm -hmm. hopefully some of the practical elements of what we were finding as using these languages in a non-academic circle mm -hmm. actually might help to generate new ideas and thoughts. We decided, okay, well, why don't we just have a conference? So mm -hmm. from that, the conference with the Polyglot Conference. Yes. Yeah. Hello, I'm Richard Simcott and I'm the founder of the Polyglot Conference and I love languages and I've studied over 50 of them myself. For me, the process goes hand in hand mit meinen Erfahrungen im Leben. Ich finde es immer toll, wenn ich mit jemandem auf neuen Sprachen sprechen kann. Für mich ist es sowieso heel mooi um eine andere Kultur zu entdecken. Soms bin ich auch bang, dass ich misschien nicht alles perfekt kann auslegen. Aber ich hoffe, dass was ich mit meinen Languages helps with your malaise et te laisse vraiment comprendre les liens entre les langues différentes du monde. Il y a des gens qui me regardent comme une vache espagnole, pensando que soy loco <laughs> con todos mis idiomas, practicando y disfrutando de un mundo cheio de corps. Para mí, la situación es así. Tengo más posibilidades para hacer amigos en muchas partes del mundo. Cuando era estudiante en la universidad, Я нужен говорить по-португальски с европейским акцентом. Но когда я был в Бразилии, надо знать, как использовать этот язык с бразильским акцентом. Да то я то могу че разговаривать с людьми и более разуметь другую культуру. Искам на истина да продолжа с мудро учене и да разбирам по-добре всичко всякие держава. Понекога ж языците стануват много важни за всякой дневен живот на ученикот. Прекол любов или други връзки. Поръща ни дже е букур. Пърмуа на Балкан, та ни ям шум и лунтур, че мун те флас ме нерзат джитмон. Кондо реалменте риеско а капире он артра култура, е временте она коза маджика. Ке е проблема и не и профора, але ми пос и не аплош кати пио евколо, санти граматики, 
που πρέπει να μάθει καλύτερα. Μια καινούργια γλώσσα στη τσέπη τσόκου ζελπίσε τη. Σαν να γίνει πυρτζουνιά ατσιλιό. Χέργιν, Ιντερνετ, Γκραντο Ράτζιο, Εντεδόρο Λιάουν. Μα γίνει ολότα σάντσε δε 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 Men det är ett helt femspråk och jag synes att det är också gott för henne. Hon är inte att höra vad hon vill i liv nu och vad är gammal. Bara tala med ett ungmål hjälper att förast att vinna. Ja, så 2013 var Budapest på the Korshut Club. Mm. And about 140 people from the online environment said they were going to come. Mm. And they all came from this How to Learn Any Language forum mm -hmm. and arrived in Budapest. And we had two days uh -huh. of on stage presentations from academics, language professionals. Oh, you had the academics there too? We did yeah. indeed. And language enthusiasts. So okay. all three. So whether they were working as teachers, interpreters, translators, or whether they were working in academia. Mm -hmm. And we had also people like me and Luca, who were just language enthusiasts. So. Right. Right. So that was the first one. So altogether, there's been 10. Yeah. So every year we've had conferences. Obviously during COVID, they couldn't be in person. They had to be online. But um, yeah, every year. I think one was in Japan. Was one in Japan. Who did you organize that with? I can't remember the guy's name. Yeah. Um, kind of. Tom? Tom? Tim? 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 Oh, Tim? Tim? Tim Keeley, yes! Fukuoka, Japan! Nihonne ikimasu! Everybody really seemed to enjoy that event because a lot of people were not familiar with Asia or Japan. No, and it was it was actually quite surprising because normally a new continent, when you get a new continent or very far off destination from where it's traditionally been, which was maybe Europe was a lot of the stomping ground of these kinds of events. At the event in Japan, obviously, we then since then have people who have followed us around from Asia. Along that way, other events were born. For example, Judith Meyer had an idea for the Polygat Gathering. So she wanted to have an event like that, a kind of a nice way of doing it, the two different events. Mm -hmm. At different times of year, right? But there's even beyond that. Yes. Tetsuya. Yeah. And Tetsu started the Lang Fest. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then from there also you've got um, Polyglotar in Brazil. But but the inspiration came from the original. Yeah, the point. original ideas of, yeah. of Lang Fest and, mm -hmm. and the Polyglot Gathering, and then obviously the original event. Of and then you had something in Scotland, of course. Now <laughs> this weekend yeah. here in Malaysia. So I wanted to make something that was um, more agile and Austrian. that would be a smaller event. Mm -hmm. So in Australia, I was. I was going there anyway for uh, a different type of conference and decided that actually, you know, we should have a, a language event. And mm -hmm. so we called it the language event. Are, are some people teams. scared away when they say polyglot conference? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, the polyglot conference is for anyone who loves language. Going back that time we spoke together, we had a video conversation switching languages and I think we overlap for many, many languages. I've studied 47 and the difference would be that a lot for Asia because I've been in Asia for 42 years. Yeah. Asia is a big part of mine at 12 languages, but we share Slavic, Germanic, Romance languages. I also study Celtic languages, Welsh, which is my heritage language, mm. Cornish and Irish. One question I often get is, uh, let's go through a number. And the first one would be, how do you maintain so many languages? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you my answer first. Uh, I don't make a, a effort to do all the languages. Like once a week or once a month, I have them all written down. I'm not gonna go through 30 or more languages. Rather, I let them come naturally. If I wanna watch uh, some media in a certain language, um, I'm also exposed to certain languages uh, often, as I'm sure you are. And then besides that, I revitalize and try to improve a language I know I'm going to use. For yeah. example, before coming here to Malaysia, I grabbed my textbook and just started reading again yeah. and reading things in Malay so that when I got here, I could converse, yeah. which really helped because I've been speaking a lot of Malay uh, you know, at the conference and such. And, we, and a lot of the 
lengthy talks for about that. What do you say when people ask you, how do you maintain 50 something languages? No, you don't, is the, is the very short answer, you don't. It doesn't really matter mm. how many languages I speak. What matters really and why it's important to me is because I like it personally. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not something I tell people that I think that everyone should do. Learning languages generally is a good thing. When I talk about the number of languages, why it's not as difficult as it seems, you understand how you learn better, you understand how language function, you learn to think in a language, mm -hmm. you know your best way to, to learn, and also you know how to ne negotiate meaning when you can't remember something, you know how to phrase it yeah. in a way where you can get your point across. Yeah, that's why I say study, <laughs> because mm -hmm. you just say you, you learn an entire language, is you never do. No, not even your native. So often people ask me, how do you study or can I study uh, more than one language at a time? What's your advice? Mm -hmm. Possibly. Um, some people can, some people can't. Uh, I have come across people who find it extremely difficult to do that and they mix the languages up. Mm. And so my advice to those people is do what is comfortable for you. Uh, what works for Tim Keeley, what works for me, what works for um, anyone else is going to be different. So it's it's all going to be very personal and um, you can try it. And if it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you. I very much agree with what you're saying, but I also say to them, it's a matter of training your mind too. Yeah, I mean, at different times it might work. So I mean, for, even for one person, the person that doesn't work for in the beginning, maybe later it might do, you can keep trying. It's not a, a process of an on and off. I mean, we're not talking about these on and off switch thing. Right. This is, if you think of it more of a dimmer switch, you can right. turn it up and try it, and then turn it down mm -hmm. to go back to one, mm -hmm. and then turn it up again. Or, and then, okay, it's not working, turn it back down again. Great to see you again, my friend. Good to see you too. Yeah.